Like the seven days have started the way. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
whole thing work together? A year, two years, three years? How long will it take? Well, in, the, in places where I've been before, and again, every place is unique, and every place is different. We ran the Super Bowl in Green Bay after they come back to work in five months. We had a play solid playoff caliber team in three. Seattle, uh, we ran the Super Bowl in seven years, and we were a solid playoff team in eight years. We went to the class our first year, but really, by the time we got to these organizations, you can do this if you find the quarterback. That's the key. If you find the quarterback, you can you can get the other stuff. If you don't, then it takes over. It's, it's pretty, that's how I look at it. I don't think it's any more complicated. Well, what's the fairest way? Yeah, wait a minute. One, one second, Andre. If, if, if you can be honest with us here, and I'm not saying that you can't be, but I don't know how far you want to go, okay, with this question. I mean, you're an expert at this business, or otherwise you wouldn't be there. Okay? Well, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you know, right. don't be careful with this compliments. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, you have the credentials to prove you know what the hell you're doing. Like, I know what I'm doing in radio, and I have the credentials to prove it. You have it on the football side. So I'll ask this question to an expert there. In your eyes, is Colt McCoy, can he be that quarterback? I believe he can. Yes. And uh, it's, 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 uh, I don't think I'm, I'm usually a class half full guy anyway. And it's important to us in our development that he be good. So, but in trying to be objective anyway, uh, I think he can. He has shown me uh, certain skills and his certain abilities last year in a very brief window that he can do this. And I think with this new type of offense that we're installing, that will only help him. That be a, it it kind of it kind of fits into his wheelhouse and things he's good at. So yeah, I, I think and he's going to get a chance to prove it. Now I, it doesn't really matter that I think that he's got to still prove it. Was was I don't know if you again I'll ask. I don't know if you've answered this. I haven't heard it. But then, was Colt? Your guy in the draft last year, you were the one that wanted him. Was it Mangini? Did you have your eyes on Colt McCoy, you personally? Uh, no, well, what we did is we worked Two years ago, I'm talking about draft. We worked up all the programs. We worked them all up. Tom Hecker, who's in charge of our personnel, right? We set up the board. Colt, um, if you remember that Bradford Colt, there was about four or five quarterbacks in that year's class that. We were sprinkled out in the first three rounds. Colt, uh, even though he had a, a, a lustrous college career, uh, we had him in the third round. We had him as a third round break. Or, you know. Okay, so uh, I tried to, we tried to make the trade, move up there and make a spectacular pick with Bill Travis because I thought he was skill wise and physically. Uh, that didn't work. So now we're going through the draft, and we get to the third round, and uh, all I said, it was our guy. It wasn't my guy, it was our guy. Tom had him up there, our personnel people had him up there, and I just planted the seed a little bit, you know, because we were looking at a defensive lineman as well, because we had a lot of needs. I mean, shoot, we, we were a lot of holes. So we were looking at the defensive lineman, and then he got picked early in the third round. So I said, hey, we don't take it. All I said was, what about now? What about now? Because if we don't take them, we're not going to get them. Because they don't And so we had that discussion. And the time was off. I didn't have to push it. I just asked the question, what about now? What's the fairest way? This is for fans more than anything else. What's the fairest way to judge Colt McCoy this year? Because they hear you right now say so you think he can be the guy. Yeah. And sometimes those expectation levels go a little higher than you probably should earlier. What what for you after 16 games make you say, he's our guy going forward? Well, I, I think in fairness, I've always felt and this includes Joe Montana, Steve Young, Fred Farr, all the guys that live around here. To, in our system, if you can stay in this system by year three, by year three, if you've been playing, if you've been playing, you, you should have it. You should, you should show people who you do by year three. It takes a while. Now, last year, Paul played and great. You know, that year, he had some enormous. But then he also played left the work, which is understandable. It's a hard position to play. 
this year with his preparation, and I expect him to be better. I expect his interception or touchdown ratio to be better. That's always a good thing. Um, I hope he stays healthy. That, that's maybe the biggest thing. play the best. Have that kind of benefit with him or something like that. And, uh, but you, you should see improvement. You should, should see uh, statistically better. We should have a little bit more balance off of or it should now, it's all good. But, hey, my, 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 my expectations are high, too. Right. So I'm saying the same thing. It's okay to shoot for you. Does Peyton Hill, in your opinion, fit into the type of offense ultimately you want to see? Beautiful. You know, and again, I'm going back to my time in Seattle. Sean Alexander led the league in Russia in 2006. He had 1,800 yards rushing. And the has to back so it was a pretty balanced thing. So Peyton, he's got great skill. What, what, what the backs need to have is uh, more than just what you would think running back. You just got to have good hands. And Peyton has good hands. He's a willing blocker. He's a willing blocker. And so he fits nicely. Yeah. Um, the receivers, every time I do a show, oh, they need to, I like the receivers. Yeah. I think they, and I'm not going to put down, but I just think they're good. They're all have size, though. Uh, is it hard for you to for a guy to kind of be better than the other side? Because Mohammed's obviously been hurt, so you can't say. And I think most of us thought he'd be the number one. Yeah. Are you not worried about that position at all now that this is an offense, especially with Brian and Mohammed? Their size seems to fit this offense. Yeah, I, I think no, I'm, I'm worried about it. Okay. <laughs> I think we have to. They, they've got to show us now. Uh, again, the offense will be more wide receiver friendly, so that'll be an advantage. I talked to all those kids about that. Um, Mo, Mo would be the, our number one receiver. I would expect him to be. He's going to be on practice. He'll be and uh, that's what I'm counting on. Now, we're off the young we, we, I think, I think in a perfect world, I'd like to increase that pile a little bit. So we have a veteran somewhere along the line. I think it's important. But skill-wise, skill-wise, this guy little, I think, uh, is a project. You know, he's a rookie. So let's, let's let him play a little bit before we annoy him. But I think I think he's a, he's a, going to be a fun player, and we have good size. I mean, the receivers, I, I like the size. I will say this: last week when we started doing red zone drills, yeah, it changed my whole thought process in the offense because we start seeing when you're going to have matchups that you should be able to win, whether it's with Evan Moore, Jordan Cameron, Little, uh, when you move him around. If you can get in the red zone, this offense should be way better than it was in the past. But that's for me. You can tell me if I'm wrong. But it looks like it would be more fun to watch this offense. No, you're exactly right. I think one of the things, I thought we moved the ball recently last year, uh, we had a heck of a time in the red zone. We had a list of the most productive as we like. But for the reasons you mentioned, the exact reason it should be better. We, we can create some magic problems because these guys are big and it's still fast. And Evan Moore is a spectacularly good hand. He's a good receiver. So we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. We're at, at Berea. We'll be here at 1 o'clock. We're in Berea. We're in Berea. We're at Berea, too. We're at Berea. We're <laughs> do, you, do you know how you know you're not a Cleveland? We're talking about the president of Browns, Mike Holmberg. Do you know how the definition of how you know you're not a Clevelander? No. When you get lost coming to Browns camp. <laughs> He's got a good hat. Introduce yourself. Go. <laughs> I'm, I'm going, and I got lost on the way to Browns camp. I put in Lou Gross of Field right. accidentally oh, into the GPS. Mm-hmm. I'm an East Sider. I, I don't come to. to That's no up. excuse. I'm an, am I, an, I guess I'm an East Sider. Am I an East Sider? Where you at? Ratnall? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. You got a coach. I get here. Really? He's an East Sider. Well, he's got a little bit more practice. I don't know the G. I don't need the GPS. Born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> That's oh, go and ask him about his obscure players. Terrible. Nobody knows you want to talk about yeah. horrible, Mike? This is my right hand guy. <laughs> this is Steve well, I, You know, I've always had tremendous respect for you. Uh, until until, until now. now. Off the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure we have that on tape, okay? Well, <laughs> There's a ringing endorsement for you, Goldman. <laughs> yeah, Everyone wanted me to bring this up. The Carolina Panthers signed an undrafted free agent. Ask him because he's been annoying me. Assuming that they cut him at some point. You need to get defensive end out of Oklahoma State, Ugo Chinasa, on this team. He has all the measurables. 
He's a big guy, very fast. Played good at a play. Why are people laughing at me? You know who this is what we've been laughing at. All morning we've been laughing at you. Right. He, he just said after the guy gets cut. Now? What is wrong? I'm drafted free agent. Who goes to now? Who gets cut, by the way, you want? That's really an exciting part. <laughs> Yeah, coach. Thank you. The guy, he's been yelling at me for about five months. You gotta ask him about you, go. I go, you go. You gotta ask anybody. Like, oh, but we're trying not only during the game, but during practice with the new CBA and uh, some of the rules that uh, certain players are moaning about hard hits last year and everything. Yeah. Are they trying to take a sport? I think we're running by you. Get your opinion on this. Are they trying to take a sport that's a violent sport that there's no way to prevent injuries? Are they are they hurting the sport trying to do everything they're trying to do to it? Is what I'm going to ask you. At this point. I, I don't think so. I, I think it's important to raise the issue of uh, certainly the concussion one because uh, that's that's dangerous and it's real. And, and I think you, we can educate the players uh, on how to tackle. Continue to educate them properly. And, uh, no, I, I, I think, but that's on one hand. On the other hand, it's football. It is football. It is, uh, there are a lot of collisions. Uh, some things, you're going to have injuries, unfortunately. You are going to have them. It's part of this business. Uh, but, but, but I think we can do some things to help. And I think it, it, as long as we go just that far and all of a sudden we'll take off the pads and the flag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I talked to Joe Thomas last week, and we were talking about you know bringing a new offense in. You know, this is like the fourth offense he's had to go through. And he told me, he goes, well, keeping George Warhop makes it easy for the offensive line for us because when in doubt, Warhop will say, this play is somewhat like this play from last year. Uh, and then I talked to TJ Ward, he kind of told me the same thing with the secondary. What was behind, you now was this you know, Coach Shermer's call? Or what was behind keeping the three coaches that you did keep? Because I know the offensive line has already told me they they love you guys and think you guys kept George Warhol because it helps them tremendously in the class. Well, you know, when you make a change like the uh, and, and Pat and I were talking about this yesterday, one of the hardest things for a new, particularly a new young coach in his first shot at it uh, is, is putting his staff together and following his staff. And, uh, you know, he has his guys he wanted. And when we sat down, uh, I, all I said to him was, look, I would like you to interview me three or four of these guys and just see how you feel. I, if I was starting if I was starting up something, they get serious consideration by me. And uh, that, and then some of the guys left right away. You know, if I was going to leave, uh, you know, some of the guys, they were left right away. Was, so there were a handful of guys. And I thought the best fit for what we wanted to do were these coaches. After Pat interviewed him, you know, he was sold on and, and, and we kept it, which was a good thing. But, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a hard thing putting the staff together. And then the challenge, if you let me, the, the challenge, when you have holdover coaches and new coaches, blending them together so it's really one vision. And the guys that we kept, you know, Jerome and, and, and George and those guys, uh, they're really quality guys, and they've done a wonderful job, as have the new guys, and kind of made them more status. So, and in fact, does a great job, a great job of communicating those people. Well, yeah. Fridays aren't going to be the same. Right? Mm -hmm. No, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that's true. <laughs> have you heard him already in Dallas? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Nick, uh, uh, back in the studio, uh, we, I'm not 360 in the studio. If you could go oh. in there, it's labeled NFL. I'd like to play this for Mike Holmgren. Uh, it, out here, and, and then I want to ask him if this is the type of He's terminology. Gonna, he'll know exactly what it is. I know he will. It's gonna be scary. Nick, can you do that for me? Yeah, just walk in the studio, and on my 360, you'll see a, a magic marker on the 360. It's right? on the bottom left hand bottom side. Left, yeah. It'll say NFL. If you could just let us know when you're going to play that. Uh, we'll stop. Don't worry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> ask him about Green Bay. You, just, you, got, you have to hear the story. Yeah. Do you want me to set it up for yeah, you? Yeah, go ahead. All right. When you came here, you told me because he kind of said, he goes, I wonder if Mike has been in a worse situation than kind of what he worked, walked into here. Most changes. Most, I with all the changes. At one time. Yeah. Yeah. And I told him, I go, wait till he gets here because he's got the best story about what the guy with the cell phones did with you in Green Bay. Yeah, we, we had a, I came into Green Bay, and again, this is my first head job, so 
And I'm from California. I'm a little suspect of guys from California anyway. They're back in the Midwest. So, uh, really? Yeah. Still are. I was asked at my press no. conference, did you bring your <laughs> surfboard with you? You know, and I said, no, I don't know. So, uh, but we're going through the thing. Um, you got to, the history of the Packers for 24 um, years, about every four years, five years, years what is all on the board. Do you know how to put up the toys? Change the furniture, but the people, all the other yeah, people stayed. And so they were used to seeing and, and then and put it up so and then the control the once you turn on the company, you turn on the machines was an older fellow been there forever forever and he yeah, really the, well it's the, the, it's the one to the right you know it's the, the, the machine on the right you enough cheeseburgers you cut it back the next week or to change the soup because they're the cereal <laughs> right? so the he goes uh comes up to me and says, coach no no you're fine you, and i never had a cell phone I, the cell phones weren't i, I never had one so he gives me the cell phone and I said, this is pretty cool. I'm going to go through this. Yes. So he goes, yes. Um, and then why don't you go ahead and pot it up? And he goes, and when you're uh, fired, I want it back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've only been there. I've been there a month or three weeks or something like that. And then, and then once you fast play forward it, confidence, huh? Yeah, yeah. fast forward <laughs> it. When you retire, Back to the other side. I'm getting in my car outside, and I'm still there. And he retired. And he came up and he goes, you know, um, okay. all right. <laughs> there you go. Does that answer your question? <laughs> and Nick, do you have the sound bite? We're working on it. We're working on it. That's what you're, your right hand oh, man's working on. Okay. Yeah. We'll have it by one o'clock. Oh, boy, they'll get lost. Actually, what it is, all it is is John Gruden calling a play. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And I, I wanted to ask you, uh, because to me it sounds like he's talking French. Yeah. All right, and there's got to be uh, how many plays in the playbook, roughly? Oh, there's in, in the hundreds. There's a hundred in a game in a game plan. There's thousands, of thousands in the playbook. And I was wondering how hard this is to comprehend. How hard it is to absorb? Is this type of offense to, to somebody uh, like me just looks like it's hard? I think it's actually easy once they get the knack of it here. Yeah, you know, once they get it, but it, there, it takes some. It takes some doing. It, it's the scheme is makes sense. It, it's. It's not more anything. than anything. The numbers make sense. Everything makes sense. But you have to treat it like you're, it, it, like the toughest class you ever took in college. I mean, you got to, you got to study. There it, it is. That you can't just come in and, and All play right. because so you're just go on the air with Drew now and say I've got the right. you got to study. On the air. You got to go on the air with him and say I've got the plan. properly to get to do it right. And then you'll be, be able to work it out sure. that way. But to do it right, you got to do it. Yeah, you got to put it. Without mentioning any names, okay, one second. My, uh, without mentioning any names, are there quarterbacks that mentally could not get this type of offense? There are there are quarterbacks that struggle with it, sure. Yeah, that, that would struggle with it. It's just they want to just go out, just give me the ball and let me play. Everyone go out for a long way. You know, I mean, you're 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 way past that. And so to be to be great, the guys that come in, you see it every year, really good players. Talented men. Right, and actually, Tracker might they come in and say, okay, I want to play for you. When, uh, when, when, when Coach Holmgren takes a break. But they don't realize, they, they don't right. quite ever get it, that they can't do it just on their ability alone. And that's the quarterback position more than any. You've got to study. This has to be what you do. Uh, you know, you can play, you can be good, you can be 7 and 9 to start a quarterback in the league, you 7 and 9, 8 and 8. A lot of guys. But to get to the Super Bowl or to be really great, yeah. no, you got to approach it differently. When Peyton Manning jumps around and waves his arms for five minutes and points everywhere and yelling everything, is half of that just show? Some not not show, but half Deep of it voice? half of it means nothing. You know, because I had a quarterback that we traded in and out to so back up to Peyton for a few years and then he came back to me. Uh, and so I was very curious about all that stuff. And, <laughs> and uh, you know what, mm. but Peyton, now, now there's a guy, now there's a guy, now he's a great player. There's a guy who uh, works harder than anybody at it, and really it's like another coach. I mean, he has so much input into what they do, and really when you break down their offense, um, their play, they don't have a tremendous amount of plays. They, they fool you a little bit, they, they really take advantage of everything the defense gives you, and he allows you to do all that, because he's on the field. Like Do they have to be smart in today's day and age to be a quarterback? I believe so. I believe so. Now there's football smarts. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm sure. You know, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not very proud of some of the grades I had in college. You know, but the, you know, but there's there's kids that are smart and aren't football smart, and then there are kids that, that aren't. You know, the, the classes aren't. They don't like it. They right. You know, but they come in there football smart, and uh, yeah, you have to be to be. To, to max out 
be the best you can be. Those guys have to be pretty sharp. Yeah. All right, Mike Holmgren, before we let you go. Uh, sure, we got it. Yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, John Gruden. Is this what your offense sounds like? Hit it, Nick. I mean, flip right, double X, jet, 36 counter, naked wagon, seven X quarter. Look at his head. Now, is he getting there or is that an actual play? No, that's a pretty long play. But if you break that down, if you break that down into pieces, it's telling everybody on the team what to do. It's telling every, your whole offensive team what to do. It was 36 naked. It means they're going to fake a 36 play, which is to the right side. And naked means the quarterback's coming out to the left side. So right away, you know it's a pass, first of all, and the action. Now, the other parts are motion. They're tell, he's telling people how to go and and, and so everything, if you break it down that way, and that's how you have to learn it. If you're a wide receiver and listen to the whole thing, it's screw you up. Right. So you, but you hear the part that's meant for you. Oh, okay. right. Okay. And the line has their part. But the quarterback, see, they came to your point, that's really, the quarterback has to know it all and actually be able to say it. You know, I remember, and I won't say the quarterback's name, but John has been doing this thing since he's working for ESPN and working with quarterbacks. He makes them say stuff like that. Call a play for me. Call the longest play you have. And some of and it, and it's, it's, it's small. You get in the huddle, and if you can't be very keen and descriptive with your team, pretty soon they're going, man, what are you doing? You, know, you don't have to be able to say it. Is that what Colt McCoy is doing right now? Yeah, he's really good at that. I mean, that's, a, that's not easy, but he's good at it. So you check that one off the list. Okay, he can do that. Now you got to worry about something else. You know? right. so. How much do you scale back the offense, though? Well, not you, but with Sherman. How much do you have to scale things back right now? Because if somebody hears that play, obviously there's a lot to learn. Right? Yeah. I think, you know, it's up to Pat. And what we talked about was, look, at, throw it at him. Let's see, what, let's see how they handle it. Throw it, just install and throw it at him like we had in the offseason. Like nothing changed. Now, if we see a bunch of mistakes taking place on the field, now you're going to have to make a decision on your scale back. But in the beginning, let's see how they do this. Practice has started here at Berea, and uh, we're with Mike Holmgren, the president of the Cleveland Browns. Do you ever just want to go out there and start yelling at anybody? Sure. You see the practice? I love it. <laughs> no, it's, it's fun for me. And that's, Why don't you do I it? Just a that. kid with sure, kid around with Sherman. What? They just walk out there and take over, you know, then tell them I'm only kidding. You know, what I, <laughs> you know what? I would do that, honestly. I, mean, I would do that when I was coaching. Everyone's finally get upset, and I just, boom, you know, explode. And, and Gil Haskell, who's been with me a long time, and he's now a co health and tech coach, uh, he, he always would, he had the, I gave him the permission, if you will, to come at any time and say, hey, you might be going to sideways, you're a little over the top, calm down. He was the one guy that could come and tell me he was the French driver. And so he might come after practice, because I do that in the practice, all of a sudden the rest of the practice, no one said, hey, it was quiet, it was like a ghost, you know. And I said, what is going on? And he goes, when you do that, everyone just gets so, <clears throat> that they don't, they stop, they stop, they stop coaching, they stop talking, they get nervous. And I go, jeez, you know, I can't do that anymore. Come on, i got to be able to do that once in a while. And so those were discussions I had when I stopped that. And, Mike, I appreciate the time we got to go to the news. If, if it's all possible, I know you guys might be busy. If you get Hackett out, it would be great. You know, well, Hackett, you know, Hackett's such a good shot. Now. He doesn't. He doesn't even. He rarely comes. <laughs> <laughs> is it hard that I call him? Is it hard that I call him? Most important guy for you. He is. In there it is. In Ohio. Yes. He, you're right. You better not let Randy hear you say that. Hey, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Mike, Mike, thank you very right, much. Thank for you. Th Thanks, good Mark. luck too, no, by the way. Appreciate it. No news. No, no, no news. No news. No news. Because we've already went past news. Just grabbing.